There's no obscuring the horrifying things that took place at the LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans, Louisiana, back in the 1800s. I'm Carol, and I'm going to investigate a photograph I received that captured what appears to be something supernatural in relation to the mansion. This piece of evidence was submitted by Stephanie, who's been on our channel before, and when I was looking for someone who might have some evidence, she happened to reach out and say, hey, I caught what I think might be uh, something supernatural. Let's go ahead and see what Stephanie has to say about what she believes she captured. Hi, Stephanie, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Before this experience, would you say that you were more like a skeptic or a believer? Up until I was 22, 21, I was like a skeptic. Like I did not believe in anything. I didn't even like, I wasn't even spiritual or religious or anything like that. I, I, I went a good portion of my life not believing in those things. And then when I moved to Denver is when I had my own fair share experiences. So tell us about this photograph that you captured. For my like 27th birthday, we went to New Orleans. My husband told me like, you might want to bring you like your really nice camera. When we did a tour, we did basically like a French Quarter, Bourbon Street. We, we were literally looking at all the houses, then just kind of briefly talking about them. We started the tour at seven and this was like in October. So, you know, like the sun goes down a little bit earlier. They started talking about the story of the Lala Ree house. Truthfully, there's no gentle way of putting this because there's nothing gentle about it. As it's been told, Marie Delphine LaLaurie was a woman who was said to have grotesquely tortured enslaved people. She's said to have inflicted unimaginable torture and was said to have conducted unthinkable experiments on them. The souls of her victims are believed by some to be trapped on the property, where some feel that the agonizing pain of the spirits haunt those very grounds. A tragic incident during her cruel spree is a story retold by many of a young enslaved girl who was said to have been running away from La Lurie to evade being captured and likely ultimately tortured. The young girl fell to her death from the roof during the chase. So I took a picture of that spot and ironically like right where like they were telling the story. We were told no one was staying there, but there it was. There was a picture of what seemed like a face and I can't help to think that could be the spirit of this little girl. I mean, I don't know, it just looks like a really small face. It just weirded me out. I think it's the spirit for sure. Could it be possible that what we're looking at in this photograph might be the spirit of the young girl who fell from the roof while running away from La Lurie? So I accidentally had like zoomed in on one of the images. It was actually a different image. So I got to that picture. And when I zoomed in, I was like, wait, is that a speck? Is that, or that, is that like my lens? So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't like my lens, like might've had a scratch or something on it. It wasn't like a dust. So I started zooming in on all of the images. And that was the one picture that had that weird face on it. And I'm like, no way. So part of me is like, okay, if I had a scratch um, or there was a speck on my lens, it would have shown up in other images. Her heinous and sadistic acts were exposed during a house fire that broke out on April 10, 1834, as one of the many lavish parties thrown at the Lollary Mansion was taking place. Reportedly, the fire was started by an older enslaved woman who was working in the kitchen in an attempt to cease the nightmare under that roof. When the fire broke out, firefighters were trying to access a locked room for which there was no key present in the midst of the chaos and thus it was broken down where they were met with an indescribable, cruel scene. People caged, gravely wounded, and badly mutilated, some beyond recognition. Those suffering greatly from the horrendous, cold-blooded acts of Marie Delphine, La Lurie. La Lurie made an escape during the commotion and was never caught. I didn't want to jump the gun and be like, this has to be a ghost. Like, I really wanted to look at it from like a lens of like also practicing healthy skepticism. So I messaged my friend who's a photographer and they're really good with like settings and lighting and all of that stuff. I brought in my psychic friend who also practices healthy skepticism and they didn't know it was a Lollary house. So after all the things that they were picking up, like I feel some really sad, really dark energy from this. I don't know what it is. 
And I said, okay, I took a picture of the Lollary house. This is one of the windows from that house. And they're like, damn, okay. They say the light sources are on the corners and across the street. It seems yeah. as though the illumination of most of this building might have been coming from your flash, right? Yes. So there isn't really like a direct light from what I remember, not directly in front of it. It's not like a bright white light. It was more orange. And so I would say it's more dim. And I would say like that building is taller than most of the buildings in that area. So here we are in New Orleans, Louisiana. Thanks, Google. Here's the Lollary Mansion here. And across the street from it is this brick building. And it seems to be shorter, as Stephanie mentioned, everything else around it also seems to be pretty short. And there's the window that Stephanie photographed, these two windows here, where she's captured what she believed is the ghost of the young girl. And here is this lamp she mentioned, that there were street lamps on each corner. There and there, nothing directly in front of the Lollary Mansion itself, or at least where she was photographing. Okay, so now we know her location and everything else is much shorter. And if there's anything that would be reflecting that, we have to probably come from this region here. And the only thing I could think that could possibly have created it might be this thing here. It seems to be somewhat directly across from it. Feels like the proximity between them is close enough to possibly have created some type of reflection off of her camera flash. It's not to say that she didn't capture anything, but that there is this piece of metal that could have bounced that light. It's quite a dull piece of metal, but it obviously could still reflect some kind of light. This is Stephanie's actual photograph. When you zoom in, you could see clearly that her flash really does illuminate the image. You could see the patterns from the actual window reflecting onto these arches. And you look closely on this side, same thing over here. What's interesting is how much her flash is lighting up this side of the room. You can see the wallpaper, the ceiling, this window, however, is much darker in this room. You can still see the line of probably where the ceiling is. That looks like the ceiling, some type of molding. There's a little light bouncing off this curtain here, some type of shiny material, but you can certainly tell that it has texture, the piece of fabric naturally hanging in the window. And then we get to this. It's like, what is this? The color of it too is kind of interesting because if it was a reflection of the pipe across the street, I would imagine that it might be a little bit more bright and not necessarily a warmer sepia tone. And if it were the pair to that curtain, I'm not sure it would be resting right in the middle of the window and that we'd only see just that much of it and not the rest of it. Before she even told me what I was looking at, I immediately saw this eye, this little thing here that looks like an eye. This looks like a forehead, a cheek. The more you zoom in, the more you kind of start to see there's some kind of shape here. You know, it's not just a little blemish and it almost feels like it's peeking out from this little slot, almost as if it's looking right into her camera. Could it maybe be a doll in the window? What do you think? Obviously, this is something that a Photoshop guru could easily pull off and manipulate and make it look authentic. However, she said she did not doctor it, she didn't Photoshop it, she didn't do anything to it, and says that it's straight from her camera, the way she shot it. The other conflicting thing is that there are some accounts of the story where the little girl fell from the top floor as opposed to the roof. But that's not to say that there isn't something else haunting this room. It may not be the spirit that we think it is. It could be another spirit altogether. Do you see it? After doing like all your research and everything like that, do you firmly believe that what you saw is the ghost of the young girl? Like, do you believe that's true? Or do you feel like it could still possibly be debunked. I'm always like open to the possibility of everything to be honest like I think it's the spirit to be honest with you but I'm also open to the possibility of it being like a light in there somehow. Some believe that it's not haunted simply because it's not the original building but a new building doesn't exactly wipe away the history of the grounds on which it stands either. What happened there still happened there. Underneath that piece of architecture are very likely haunting memories and trapped energy still lingering between the walls, living within the soil of that property. 
one that's etched a deeply sad and horrific history into our timeline. So if you have what you believe is evidence of the paranormal and would like to share it along with your story with our audience, submit your media and your story at the link in the description box. So the next time you photograph or film something, take a good look because you might have captured more than you expected.